what's up beautiful people listen to remember welcome to the channel today we have pierce morgan and ice cube the full interview awesome i'm excited to check this one out let's check it out and i'm joined now by ice cube well ice cube thank you so much for joining me thanks for having me man. It's great to have you it's good to be here a bona fide mm -hmm. legend oh thank you thank you, thank you, you. like being, you like being called a legend uh it's cool you know uh it's it's cool. It's it's, it's interesting because I'm still you know here and I'm I still feel like I got so much to do, so um, it, it's nice. You were born O'Shea Jackson. Who actually calls you O'Shea? Uh, my mom, my my pops, my my wife, um, my brothers and sisters sometimes, but mostly everybody call me Cube. Is is O'Shea different to Cube? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In what O'Shea's way? O'Shea's my real. My real name, and, and when I hear that, I, I'm either looking for my family or a check. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you gonna call me O'Shea? Hope you got a check. And um, Cube is what my friends been calling me since I was 12 years old. So. Oh. Let me ask you this. There's been a lot of stuff uh, about the state of the world, about the state of America. Where do you see things right now? I think, um, I think, you know, People are very polarized in all kind of ways. Uh, people are afraid to mm. speak out uh, because of the cancer culture. Cancel, I said cancer. Cancel culture that we have today. So I, I just think, you know, people are afraid and they're running to their corners, you know. Mm. Um, in a way, it is a cancer. Cancel yeah, culture. It, it behaves like that. It does because it makes not only the person that's getting canceled, uh, they're trying to shut them up, but anybody's watching now they shut up because they say, if it can happen to this guy, it can happen to me. Yeah. So by by smashing somebody who says something that you might not like and canceling them, mm. it actually reverberates throughout the whole community and everybody now is watching what they say all the time. Well, see, what's the answer mm -hmm. to this? Because I think it's crazy that in a democracy like the United States, like the United Kingdom, that people are too frightened to speak their mind, to say what they think. What do we do about this? I think you say what you want to say and to hell with the consequences. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing to fight for your rights and fight for what you believe in. And if you're a, a person who believes in freedom of speech, you have to fight and say what you feel and let the chips fall where they may and uh, stand on that. And, you know, it may not be an easy road, but um, I think you feel better about yourself when you say what needs to be said at the time it needs to be said and not hmm. afterwards where you go home and think, I should have said this. Said when that guy was there or when I was there, I should have said that and I didn't. Well, you can that haunts you more. You can definitely say what the hell you like on this show. It's well, called that, it's called uncensored for a reason. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here, man. You know, that's You've always been uncensored. Um, let me ask you this. Is America more racist or less racist than when you were a kid? I think it's pretty much the same because mm. it's uh, it's institutionalized and you know, the institution takes on different faces, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if the, if racism in the financial sector or has gotten any better. Um, mm -hmm. We still have a hard time getting capital when we need it. We still have a hard time um, having that access to, to those, you know, currency streams that's out there um, and, and so it affects us in the same way. In 1865, black people own um, maybe one or two percent of America, um, and I believe we're still in that same place. Is that right? Yeah. It's barely changed. Barely changed. It's, in some ways, it's gotten worse. I mean, <laughs> worse, but it's gotten worse. Um, I think the Corner Commission did something in 1968 about the poverty um, in America and how it affects uh, all the people, and, and we're, we're worse than we were in 1968. The last 
rapper that I interviewed in this very studio was Ye, Kanye West. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've had a wobbly relationship with him, but you're back, <laughs> you're back on track. I read that you, you saw him, in fact, a few days ago. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I mean, we were always cool. You know, he just, he spoke my name without really explaining what he meant. And I, and I just really couldn't leave that statement out there without, you know, he never explained what he meant. And so I had to, you know, kind of rebut that. But since then, we've talked, and I think, I think Ye understands that generalizing will, will always get you in, in more uh, hot water than being very specific. Mm. You know, you can. Because be I haven't really seen much specific. of him since I interviewed him. He's kind of disappeared. I mean, how is he? How's he dealing with what's happened to him? Um, I believe he's doing great. You know, he's still, you know, dealing with um, with some people trying to hold on to his money. Um, but for the most part, I believe he's um, in a good space. I think he's. You know, learned a lot from this past year, and you know, hopefully he'll come out better on the other side. When you saw some of the crazier things he was saying, the anti-Semitic statements he was making, what did you feel as someone who knew him well? What did you feel about that? I felt that um, if he was really um, upset with specific people, that that the the message he was saying would uh, would kind of hijack what he's really. Um, upset about, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and you know that's that's kind of what happened. Um, you just can't generalize. You have to be specific, especially if you're um, talking about uh, anybody, any race of people. You have to be specific on who exactly you're talking about. Yeah. Let's talk about the music industry. Huge amount of attention being given to artificial intelligence now. Yeah. Uh, clearly, it has awesome power, not least to replicate how people like you would make music. What do you feel about that? I think it's terrible. I mm. think it's, uh, it's going to make people lazier, uh, less creative. Mm. Um, you know, could you imagine if an actor, like if I decided not to do a sequel and the movie company said we have we have the rights to your likeness right we're gonna put you in the sequel whether you want to be or not because right. we have the right to so now they use AI to put ice cube in a movie I don't want to be in mm. saying things I don't want to say and doing things I wouldn't do mm. so mm. to me that's terrible or or yeah. taking an artist that's passed away and having them do a new song with lyrics that they may not agree with um, it's just, you know, we're just, it's a slippery slope that it will hurt us more than it will help us. Is there yeah. a benefit that you can see where you could use AI to enhance what you do? Um, I mean, we use, you know, automation here and there to help advance and make us sound better. But, you know, once you take the paintbrush out of the painter's hand, is it really a painting from him, you know? Right. Um, well, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Is yeah. it? I mean, I don't yeah, know. Like, if, I, if, if somebody does an Ice Cube AI song, how could it be an Ice Cube song? It's, it's an artificial, it's like a mannequin or a puppet or, you know, that's how I look at it. It's not real. Is, do you think it's going to kill us all, artificial intelligence? Um, I interviewed, I interviewed uh, Professor Stephen Hawking before he died. And I said, what's the biggest threat to mankind? He said, when artificial intelligence learns to self-design, that's it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there are, it's already figuring us out in a lot of different ways. Um, I've heard that it's learned how to lie. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, this is, this is the, you know, in every... Yeah. Science, fi science fiction movie, this is the beginning of the yes, end. Yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. If you knew it was about to end, what would you, what would you do on your last day? Um, you got 24 hours to live. Hug my family, love mm. them, explain to them how much I care about them. Um, you know, pray to my maker uh, and prepare myself to meet them. Mm. Would you have a last meal? 
Probably so. Yeah. What would you have? Everything I could stuff in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna worry about any dieting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll be probably sick off everything on that day. You turned down uh, a nine million dollar movie role in 2021 because you wouldn't take uh, the COVID vaccine as being mandated in Hollywood at the time. Any regrets? There's a lot of money. Not at all. Not one regret. You know, my thought when I heard that story. You must be even richer than I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody can use $9 million. I don't care how rich they think they are. Yes. You know, everybody can use that money. I could have used that money. My family could have used that money. But I felt like, you know, your health is worth more than all the money in the world. Because mm. if you had all the money in the world and you wasn't healthy, you would, you would use that money to get healthy. So, um, to me, it was an experimental drug, and um, they had no time to really see the long-term effects like mm. most. Now, I'm vaccinated. I've been vaccinated mm. when I was a kid, but these are drugs that have been tested for decades, and you know pretty much most of the side effects. I mean, ultimately, I felt about COVID vaccines that once it was established against what they initially thought, that you could still transmit the virus, whether you were vaccinated or not, to me, it becomes a personal choice. Then it's down to you. Yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, the pharmaceutical companies made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, businesses closed. It, you know, it, it was a, it's, it's like an incentive, even when things are not going right, to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like the war machine. You know, if, if you make the bullets and the Band-Aids, you're going to always want to be in war because it's profitable. Have you worked out who you're going to vote for next year? No. It's what we would call in Britain the Hobson's Choice. <laughs> What's that mean? It means it doesn't matter, matter which way you go, you're going to get screwed. I mean, wow. Joe Biden looks like he barely knows what day it is. Donald Trump might be in a prison cell. So if that's the choice, what does it say about America? Um, that, you know, America needs to re-examine where we are, where we're going, mm. who we want to lead us, and what kind of country we actually want to be. You know, a yeah. um, lot of choices. That's you know, true. I've, I've become independent in all this because I like to sit back and see, you know, who's really going to mm. be the best choice. Um, unfortunately, the choices are not... Um, always top-notch, so to speak. Have you thought of running yourself? Oh, I would never run. There you might know, be I a vacancy now, can you? Nah. Seated nah. the territory. <laughs> nah, I don't want to be a politician, you know. They can king me. <laughs> they can make me king, I'll be a king. Well, actually, I've I always felt if it hadn't been for King George III being so useless, you could still have the monarchy here, and it could be King Piers. I mean, <laughs> right? Uh, I could share I the mean, throne with you. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. What do you think? <laughs> Hey, uh, I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? He told me to move aside. <laughs> All right, I'll cede, I'll cede monarchical power to King Cube, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Great to see you. Thank you good very much. Good to see you always, Chris. Really good. Wow, this was interesting and engaging. I must say that this was really uh, insightful. I would say, in my opinion, this is like grown adults having a beautiful interview conversation without having any craziness or having any form of craziness nobody interrupting the other everybody listening and like this is this is this is what we call um adult conversation interview and yeah i i, I read i i know i listen to um ice cube brain up i love his music and I mean, I respect him, but hearing him say, uh, hearing him speak here in this interview increased the level of respect I have for him. I must say that, and I love how calm, relaxing, and soothing this was. This was really, um, really beautiful to hear him speak and hear his honor, hear his opinion, and. Hear him have the conversation. 
I mean, but all the same, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment down below. I love your contribution on this. What are your thoughts about this? What, yeah, what do you think about the interview or the com the interview between um, Pierce Morgan and um, Ice Cube? I really love your contribution in the comment down below. You can share all the useful information you think might be really helpful. And until next time, see you in the next video.